So I'm going to hook up the LED first. So I'm going to take the LED and I've decided I'm going to use PB0, which is pin 5 on the chip, and that's going to be the pin that I'm going to blink. So I'm just going to connect the positive end, the anode of the LED, which is always the longer end. I'm connect that to pin 5. And then the resistor is going to take the negative, the cathode, and connect that to ground, which is also pin 4 on the chip. So that resistor is just going to go in there like that. So this is why it's really good to have a data sheet at hand or a pinout of the chip. And you can just look at what pin you have to connect where. And I use the backside of this programmer and it tells me which pins on the programming cable uh, have which function associated with them. So I can see here that this top one is VCC, so I can connect that there and then connect that to pin 8 on the chip. So that's VCC to pin 8. And then a nice blue one. Ground goes to pin 4. And then the uh, programming lines themselves, which are the M Mo MOSI, MOSI, Master Out Slave In. Oops. It's difficult to do this with the. Uh, get in. Right. Master out, slave in goes to pin 5. Right there. Reset line goes to pin 1. I can usually remember that one. Um, for some reason a lot, of, a lot of the chips, AVR chips, have a reset line on pin 1. There we go. Uh, MISO, master in, slave out. goes to pin 5, it doesn't, goes to pin 6, and then finally serial clock goes to pin 7. And that's the programmer all hooked up. So I have Eclipse installed with the AVR GCC plugins and I'm just going to go ahead and create a new C project and call it AT85 blink and I'm going to specify which chip I'm using which is an 80 tiny 85 and I know it's running at 8 megahertz because I'm using the internal oscillator and if you don't know you can always check the data sheet and you can always specify which um, clock you use with different fuse settings but I know straight from now that I want to use the 8 megahertz internal oscillator so I'm going to go ahead and change that so we've created a file main.c, which has to be the name of our uh, main file. And I'm going to include a number of headers. So this defines uh, a lot of definitions. So instead of writing a particular numerical address for different ports and registers, we can use, um, use them by their names. For example, port B and DDRB, instead of a certain register numerical value which is really handy have this abstraction. And I'm also going to include util delay h, which will use the frequency of the CPU that we defined earlier, and it will do a time delay loop, blocking loop, so it will not execute anything for a certain number of microseconds or milliseconds. I'm going to create a main function with a infinite loop. But first off, I'm going to initialize the data direction. So we want PB0 to be a output for our LED. So we do that by saying data direction register B. And we want PB0 to be an output. So if you're unfamiliar with bitwise operations, this can be a little bit confusing. So I'm going to make another video to go over that, but uh, this basically means the first bit we have set in the data direction register B. Uh, in order to make it blink, we can use an exclusive OR operation on the port B. So port B is what output level you would want on the B set of pins, um, where a 1 is a logic high, so 5 volts, and 0 is a logic low. 
and we want we want it to blink. So we're using, as I said, exclusive or with itself. And so that means if it's off, then it will go on. If it's on, it will go off. The uh, PV0. And then we're going to delay. Milliseconds and we're going to delay for one second. So 1,000 milliseconds for one second. And then we're going to go ahead and make it a release build. And we see we have an error. Now, why do we have an error? Ah, we haven't saved it. So I'm going to save it and build it again. And fortunately, no errors this time. And you can see lots of details about the build. And we, <coughs> sorry, we see that it only takes up 84 bytes, which is, yeah, not very much at all. Next, we're going to have a look at our programmer settings. So we're going to go into the project that we're working in at the moment. Go to properties. And I already have a program configuration here for my particular programmer, the USB app. But if you don't, you can go ahead and select one here. Uh, as I said, there's a lot of different programmers that work with AVR Dude, so you can go ahead and pick one or, or um, yeah, choose one and get it to work. So, but I'm going to go ahead and just use my USB ASP configuration. Sometimes it's useful to program at a slightly lower speed, and I think I'm just going to add 100 uh, microseconds here and the clock. Some chips can program faster, but I think running on the internal 8 megahertz oscillator, it just has to be slowed down a bit. So I always just add a, small, a value there, just, just in case. So the last thing I'm going to do before I go ahead and program the chip is just double check the few settings for this particular chip to make sure, uh, for example, the speed is running at the speed I would like. So you can leave the fuse bytes as they are, but I mean, if you don't know the initial state, it's probably a good idea to um, set them to something. Uh, but just be careful because for some chips, uh, if you change an incorrect uh, fuse byte, you can also brick the chip. Um, this can be the case, for example, if you set a clock speed, if you set it to use an external crystal and you don't have a crystal connected, uh, then you can't reprogram the chip until you have a crystal connected, which can be uh, pretty annoying. So you can uh, work out the few settings by yourself and look at the data sheet, but Eclipse and the plugin have a very useful editor for each individual chip. So I'm going to go ahead and fill out the settings that I would like. Uh, you don't want brownout detection. I don't want to divide the clock by eight. Don't want the clock output. Don't want to in enable that. EEPROM can stay, although I'm not using it. You don't want to disable the reset pin usually, because if you disable it, that means you can't reprogram the chip easily as the reset line is required um, for programming the chip. So I'm going to say I don't want it to be disabled. Self programming enable, sure, why not? Uh, sure. And then 8 megahertz is the uh, clock source that I would like to use. So those are the few settings that I would like. I'm just going to apply that. And when we come to program the chip, these will also apply the few settings at the same time. So I'm just going to go ahead and program the microcontroller by hitting this program button just here. And hey, our LED starts flashing with a one second delay between each toggle. So our program is successful. So in general, Eclipse is quite a nice environment for working with AVR microcontrollers, especially with this plugin. Um, there are other features in that the plugin provides that are also very useful. So I mean, there's also a device explorer, which can be useful if you select your chip. Um, well, let's just let's just select this one, the 80 mega 3 2 so the uh, Arduino chip and it gives you an overview of all the different registers in a description and their address. So I'm saying when I was talking about the this include here, this allows us to use the name instead of this address. So that's really handy. It's also really handy to have this as a reference. Uh, there's a list of all the ports here. Uh, with, I think these are external ports. So you have pin, which you use for reading 
um, input from a particular port, the DDR, which specifies whether a port is an input or an output, and you use the port uh, for setting the output level, whether it's a high or a low. And then, of course, all the uh, oops, of course, all <laughs> the uh, interrupts that the chimp supports. So yeah, I can really recommend using Eclipse to program your microcontroller projects. It's a step harder than Arduino, but it's uh, yeah, I think it's very flexible and you can do a lot of things with it.